this subong kay nakatapos naman kita sa so we are done with uh, our discussion na on uh, we are basically finished with uh, our hydrostatics na so we did not cover na the entirety of the fluid mechanics which includes uh, fluids that are in motion na but we set us set it aside na for a group that is uh, presenting it na dito sa fluid mechanics na no? may araw sila nga seven minutes of presentation but anyway you know uh, we could not cover really you now the whole and the entire coverage of physics one no? so the the reason why we just uh, provide you know with some of those topics to to learn and study no? now anyway amo ni now this will be our last coverage no uh, for this second quarter no and uh, we have quite a lengthy coverage no but anyway we will go into this discussion on temperature heat and calorimetry no uh, beginning with no, the zeroth law of thermodynamics and let's just mention no, about this law if a system a no, is in thermodynamic equilibrium with system b no and b you know is in thermodynamic equilibrium with system c you know and then therefore a and c you now are in thermodynamic equilibrium with each other you know? now assuming that these three systems are you know, uh maybe you know they are kind of separate to one one another you know? but you what you can establish is that a and b you now are are somehow you no know, they they have the same conditions you no know? They are in an equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium condition. No? And then likewise, no B and C no? can also be established that no? they are in thermodynamic equilibrium with one another. No? So maybe all processes there have stopped uh, progressing all already. No? And uh, again, no? by the word thermodynamics, no? thermo is usually referring to heat, not the temperature. No? So again, if if the situations in B and C no, are in an equilibrium state, no, and then they are in similar state, then maybe now we can also no, conclude that A and C now are likewise in equilibrium, no, in a similar equilibrium condition with one another as well. No? Even though no, what we can establish is merely A and B and B and C no, we can also prove that they are in equilibrium. No, so therefore now uh, similar to your mathematics probably no a and c will eventually no be in that same state no? now temperature no temperature is the average kinetic energy no uh, which we can probably consider no in every molecule that we have no uh, in our given object no so um, our uh, our uh, other definition of uh, of temperature is also no, how cool or how hot no, is one object but somehow no, the second definition is kind of subjective no? so some people may never agree really no, on how cold is cold or how hot is hot no? for some it's too hot already but for others no they may tolerate that hotness no like drinking a uh, hot coffee no? others can drink that similar coffee you now uh, quite fine no? while others may be complaining that it is burning their their tongue no? so again no, uh, if we will define temperature in terms of hotness or coldness and sometimes no, that, that is too uh, that is too uh, subjective no? now better still if we will have a tool you no know, like a thermometer no, to be able to get no the value no now, whatever reading you get in a thermometer, then that is the average movement of every molecule. No? So if the reading there is negative two no? degrees Celsius, so so that's that's a cold environment. No? And therefore, no, the movement of the particles in a cold environment will be rather slower, or if not, no, they are actually no, not moving at all. No? But if you put no the thermometer and the thermometer is telling us that it is 100 degrees celsius no? then maybe we say that the molecules there are all excited no? because it's very very hot no? no so we can probably equate that to ourselves no 
when we are placed in an environment that is too hot, no, we we move, no, we try to fan ourselves, no, we try to make a lot of movement because again, no? similarly, the molecules in our body are also doing the same, no. But try to imagine, no, that right now it's December and it's cold, early morning, no. Usually we try to, no, put some cover, no. We don't literally move a lot, no, because it's cold, no. So we try to lessen our movement no, whenever there is lesser no, temperature reading. No. So the temperature reading no, or the thermometer reading is also an indication no, of how fast are the molecules of our body no, or a molecule is actually moving. No. So that reading there is the average no, value. We cannot actually measure no, how, how much energy is is received by every molecule no, in a container. No? But we can get its average value. No? And the average value is indicated by a thermometer reading. No? Now, one effect of adding heat no, to a material or maybe no, removing heat no, is the effect of expansion. No? So when we put fire no, on, on a particular metal, we will expect that that metal will eventually you know, get bigger, wider. No? Maybe not really significantly you know, large, like what we are thinking of expansion, but to some extent, no, even in a very, very minute scale, that metal will never be the same. No? It will always increase its length, its area, its volume. No? It will always increase. No? And in the same way, when we cool it down, the material will now also change its volume its length no? its area no? and typically no, materials do shrink no when it is colder and it expands no when it is hotter no? now uh maybe no i i put that no as most materials because there's one exception which is water no? water is a kind of an anomalous substance no in some of its now uh temperature reading no and maybe no we can always uh, we can only you know, attribute this you know, to water no? now we will realize that when water is cooled down no, from a higher temperature let's say 100 to 4 degrees celsius so from 100 which is the boiling point of water up to 4 the the water molecule will tend to shrink no? it will get smaller no? but after 4 degrees celsius when we continue cooling it down no, from 4 to 0 degrees celsius the water molecules will no longer get smaller. No? So from four and you make it lower to zero freezing point and go lower, water will now tend to expand. No? And why do we say that water expands when it is cooled down or frozen? No? Now try to put water no, in a container and put it in the freezer of your refrigerator. No? You'll notice that the container will eventually break. No? Why? When water is cooled down to a temperature which is freezing point, no, it expands. No? So that's the that's the that's one nature of water. And I think it's only water that is doing that. No? That's why they call water to be an anomalous substance. No? So but generally, you know, when we cool down materials, they tend to shrink no? and get smaller. No? Okay, different substances expand no, by different amounts, no? like bimetallic strips. No? So we have these uh, bimetallic strips when they place two metals side by side. No? So one metal is made of uh, steel, and the other metal that is placed beside it is made of brass. No? So these two metals, when heated, no, since they are made of different metals, one metal will expand faster than the other. No? Since one metal will expand faster than the other, it will tend to create no, something like a bending effect no, on the other metal. No? So the metal that will be lesser no, or slower to expand no, will tend to be pushed. And ma, the, the nature of the metals that are stuck together, it will now bend. No? And then usually no, in some uh, applications, this bimetallic strip is used in devices like a switch. No? So when you want to turn off a, a, a device, you can use this no, to make an automatic kind of switch that is dependent on temperature. 
So bimetallic strips, no? So like for example, you have your flat iron at home, no? Why is it that your flat iron, no? Will off, no? It will switch off when it is too hot, no? And it will not burn up, no? Maybe, no? They place there a bimetallic strip that will act like that, no? When the temperature is too hot, no? One metal will cause the other metal to bend, no? And then acts like a switch and then it will turn off, no? So preventing, no? Uh, overheating and preventing no, the burning of your flat iron. No? So especially if you forgot to switch it off. No? Maybe you know, it's a kind of uh, safe, safety device no, of the flat iron not to overheat. No? Now again, no, uh, when materials are heated, they tend to expand. No? So when it is expanding in its length, no, then we call it as a linear expansion. No? One of the many effects of temperature change is the change in the size of the crystalline solids, no? which occurs with, without change in state. No? So when we say not change, changing its state, so it will not change from solid to liquid yet. No? So the material will just simply change its length, no? but not to a point of changing its phase or its state of matter. No? So we know that there are three states of matter solid liquid gas no? and when heat is also introduced to materials like wax no? when you put heat there it will change from solid to liquid no? now this addition of heat no? will not go to the extent of changing the phase or state yet no? it's just uh, a change in its temperature that causes it to elongate no? or to shrink so, you know, so since our metals, no, so if you think of our metals, no, to be really good conductors, no, so metal, uh, the molecules in our metal is uh, being separated by something like a spring-like, no, uh, force that when they tend to get heated, they will expand, no, they will move away from one another, no. When you cool it down, they tend to shrink also, no? But they're kind of fixed, no? In, in their places that it's very different from liquids, no? Liquids, you can easily break them apart, no? But solids, no? It will really require a lot of effort, no? Before these spring-like no, connections no, are, are able to be uh, detached from one another, no? So, again, now these spring-like... Uh, forces no, that exist between molecules will tend to either cause the metals to move further apart or to shrink towards one another when heated or cooled down. No? Okay, now uh, all solids expand now with the rise in temperature. No? The expansion no, may be very small. No? So actually, no, we cannot literally no, uh, obviously see the expansion there. No? But it is actually there. No? Um, some of our roof guys no, will tend to make a squeaking noise during noontime. No? It's because of their tendency to slide against one another, no? our roof, no? our metal roof. So this, this sound that is being produced during a hot day no? It's actually a result of the expansion that is occurring no? in our liquid no? or in our, in our roof, no? in the metal roof. No? However, no, we can actually measure that. No? We, can, we can measure it. No? Now, uh, some roads no? are laid with concrete, no? with, with some uh, cement no? and some metals. No? Now, the importance of this expansion is that when we put it no, in the idea of roads, no, where roads are sometimes being, uh, being reinforced with the metal, that when, when roads are exposed to too or extreme temperatures, no, like too hot or too cold, and if these materials like cement, no, dried cement and, and metals no, do not expand or shrink together, it will cause our roads or bridges no, to weaken no, its structure. No? Even our buildings, no? So you'll notice our buildings, there's a post there no, that is made up of concrete, no? And there's a reinforced metal inside, no? So we call it as a reinforced steel, no? Reinforced concrete. 
Now, the behavior of the metal inside the the cement, no, or the 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 post, no, is that they expand together. No? That's why we 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 don't fear, no, that they will collapse or they will be weakened, no, because again, no, the expansion rate is kind of similar, no. But if they expand at different rates, probably, no, then we may be certain, no, that in the long run, no, our structure will be weakened, no, over the change, the varying changing temperature. No? So that's the reason why, no, we do not use other kinds of metal, no. Makita nyo na may arang ginang kabilia. We call it in in the longo as the kabilia, no. Ginang kabilia, we we don't we don't replace it with a much stronger metal and other types of metals because again, now that reinforced metal that we are using is suited and it expands, no, and shrinks together with the concrete, no, at the same rate. No? So again, now if you are a future, no, a structural engineer, no, maybe you can design and create, no, uh, your your mixture of metals and concrete, no, in the future, no? how to make them, no, better. No? Now here's a metal rod, no. Uh, the length of this metal rod probably, no, as uh, an original length called LO, no. Its temperature initially is 15. Now, if we will try to increase its temperature, no, to 25 or maybe 20, we will realize that it will not uh, maintain its length, no, as LO, no. But eventually, it will increase, no, this length, no. By an increase of 5 degrees Celsius, there would be an added length that will be uh, extended no, by your metal. No? Now, again, we draw this very long red line not to show that expansion really occur by that much in real life. No? That is merely an exaggeration to simply show that there's actually no, a change of length. No? We call it as delta L. No? And this is delta L no, is actually... no. The increase in the length. No? So if the temperature changes by 5 degrees Celsius, no, or it increases by 5 degrees Celsius, then this is the amount of increase in the length. No? But if we will double that increase, no, so from 15, let's say we will make it 25, do we expect that that change in length will still be the same? So maybe not. No? So if we will try to heat up the metal no, and increase its temperature twice, no, so from 5, him almost 10. Most likely, your change in length here will also double. No? Um, it was not uh, proportionately drawn, no, but more or less, no, when you increase the temperature from 5 to 10, no, doubling it no, will cause a doubling effect also in the change in length. No? So the change in length basically is directly proportional to the change in the temperature. No? So greater... Temperature means greater change in length. No? So many, no? delta L is our change in length, and it is directly proportional to the change in temperature. No? Now, what if we will keep the temperature the same, no? but we will vary the original length? No? So maybe now we will have a different case there. No? So now tripling the change in temperature, maybe now we will also triple the change in the length there. No? So again, not changing the temperature will change the the length of the metal. No? Okay, now we keep uh, a change in temperature the same, no, but we will make one length, no, original length to be longer than the other, no. So if the original length now are not the same, no? but we increase it with the same change in temperature, we will see that the, the elongation will also be different. No? So delta L is dependent also to the original length. No? So greater change in length will also happen when you have an, a greater original length. No? So there are two factors that affects our change in length. One is change in temperature, no? and then the other is the original length of the material. No? So LO and delta T no, are a result no, 
or they will affect the change in the length of the material. So if we will make it into an equation, then we will replace no, the proportionality sign there with a constant k. No? And usually this k you know, is changed into an alpha symbol. So this symbol over here, no? we call this as the alpha symbol. So this one no? over here, we call this as alpha. No? So the alpha symbol is uh, equivalent to K. No? And again, we call it as the coefficient of linear expansion in Greek symbol alpha. No? So two factors again that affects the change of length. No? Now, if we will try to replace our, our uh, so the final length of the metal here is actually no, LO plus delta L. No? That is if you will add these two, that is how you get no, the final length of the material. No? So LF is equals to LO plus delta T. No? But however, we have an equation already for our delta L. No? And we can actually no, replace it to this side. No? And substituting it, no? we will get this equation already. Now, since LO is a factorable value, it's a common value, then we can factor it out. Factoring out now leaves you 1 plus alpha delta T. No? Again, delta T is our change in temperature. No? LO is our original length. No? Now, let's try uh, an example and uh, let's think of these equations, no? how we can apply it in this example. No? So we have an iron rod. An iron rod is given to be no, 5 meters. <coughs> it's 5 meters long. No? Now, it is originally at 10 degrees Celsius. No? So, T sub I, no, or initial temperature, is 10. And then the final temperature is 36. No? So, therefore, there's an increase in its temperature by 36 minus 10 equal to 26 no, degrees Celsius. No? There are some texts that do not write 26 there now with degrees Celsius, but instead now they write it with Celsius degree, no? Because 26 actually here is not a temperature value. No? 36 and 10 are actual temperature scales, no? That we get from our thermometer, but 26 is not. And sometimes now they they use no uh this symbol not to indicate a change in temperature, no? 26 and then they write no. They write something like this, no? a C and a small letter O no? after that no? to indicate no, that what we are talking about no, is a change in temperature. No? It's a difference. No? So 26 Celsius degree. No? Because 26 is not actually a, a temperature reading. No? Now, some text again will write 26 Celsius degree. No? Now, if you have this change in temperature, Multiply it to alpha. No? Alpha is our coefficient of expansion. So if iron no, is used here as a rod, then the coefficient of expansion of Fe or iron is 0 0.00011 no? for every increase in temperature. No? Okay, so substituting alpha, no, which is this value, times our change in temperature. No? So multiplying these two will now give us no, a value no, which is uh, added to 1. No? So what is the final length of our rod? Then that will be no, the product of 5 times the quantity 1 plus this value, no, 0 0.00286. No? So eventually when you heat up no, the iron rod no, from 10 degrees to 36 degrees, this will be the final length of our rod. No? From 5, it will end up not to become 5.00143. No? Now, 0 0.00143 is not really a very big value. It's a very, very tiny value. No? But somehow, no, you will notice that if you have a location or a place where you're putting that metal, no, and it is actually 5 centimeters exactly, 
you will notice that when you heat it up, it will not fit anymore. No? Why will it not fit? Because it already expanded. No? Now, for you to make it fit, it, to fit that area no? or location, then you have to cool down the iron first no? before it can no? fit no? wherever you want to place it. No? Okay, so again, no? the idea of thermal no? expansion. No? Now, the idea of thermal expansion can be uh, extended no? to area. No? So area can, uh, can be increased. No? If you have no a if you have uh, an increase in so area expansion is also possible no when we increase the temperature of a metal no or a solid no so area expansion no is a uh, result no when we no when we heat up a metal no so this one now will not only expand no in its in its length no or linearly no but this one will expand in all direction no? now that amount of expansion no can be actually no similar to how we derive no our expansion in area no, or in our length no so uh, if we have here no our uh, change in area no. So change in area is uh, actually equal to this value. No? So this expression actually now is our delta A. No? Recall, by the way, the triangle symbol as, as uh, delta. No? So this triangle symbol is delta. No? So delta A no? plus original area is equal to the final area. No? However, that change in area now is equals to beta no so that's a coefficient of expansion also no now usually in terms of alpha no beta can be taken by multiplying alpha by 2 no you simply double the value of alpha no? now if you have an iron rod still and we know the uh, coefficient of expansion of iron no which is 0.00011 no? If you double that, you can get the beta value of your no? of your iron. No? So that's the coefficient of area expansion, no? ang beta. No? So now, no, the area expansion, no? which is twice your alpha, is now equal to this. No? Now, when you replace this to your equation, of course, no? you can find the total area no? of your rad no? when you let it no? be subjected to an increase of temperature from 10 to 36. No? So this is the same condition earlier, no? but what we are dealing now is an area no? having a diameter of 0.6 centimeter. No? So maybe now the original area here, no? if you will try to calculate the original area, then maybe if it, that is a circle, no? then the original area must be this much. No? So the area of a circle is pi r squared. No? So how much will be the final area when you let this be subjected no, to a change of temperature of 10 to 36? No? So again, now we can get the final area no, to be the sum no, of 1 plus the change in the area no, and multiply it to the original area of 0 0.28, no, 2744. No? And eventually when you find the final area, no, so the final area will be this much. No? So again, now, uh, when when there when when objects are now uh, being made to pass through no a certain object no like you want to let a a uh, metal ball no go through a ring no and initially supposing they will not fit no or it cannot pass through the ring what they do usually is to heat up no one material and then cool down the other no and sometimes no by doing that no they can let no two different dimensions of a metal ball and a ring no pwede siyang makalabay sa ring no again no? by by playing no or applying no the principles of expansion and shrinking no of the given metal no now in some liquids pwede man nga ang ila volume ang nagat change no so volume can also increase or decrease no 
when you no, heat them up. No? That's why we also notice that some liquid spill off, spill over no, our container when we boil water, for example. No? So why is it that when it is hot, no, then it starts to get out of the container? Maybe because the liquid inside no, expands faster than the container that is holding it. No? So if they are expanding at a different rate of volume, then naturally no, the liquid will spill out. No? But if they are expanding at the same rate, then maybe no, the container can still hold the liquid inside. No? So spillage is actually no, a result of volume expansion. No? And uh, again, no, we can apply the same technique now finding the final volume no, by using this gamma symbol, this symbol that looks like Y. No? So this gamma symbol now is called as the coefficient of volume expansion. No? And what's the relationship of the gamma value? That is three times our alpha. No? Our coefficient of volume or our area expansion beta is twice no? of your alpha. No? But this one is three times already. No? So this is the value of our change in volume. If you add it up to the original volume, then you'll get the final volume of the material. No? Now, again, now we consider here a copper tube. No? The size of the tube is 6 centimeter, no? And it is probably not heated, no? But heated, no? So this one is heated to a temperature of 75 no? degrees Celsius. Maybe from a certain initial value like zero, no? So there must be a reference value there, no? So maybe from zero to 75, that's why its change in temperature is 75 git, no? So how much is the, is the change in the final volume? So the change in the final volume is this much. No? So final minus initial, you can also get the change in its volume. No? So if the cube is initially no, 6 centimeters, so meaning 6 times 6 times 6, no, that's 36 times 6. So the original volume is 216. No? So how much will that expand? So it expanded by 0.7776 no? cubic centimeter. No? So again, no? uh, this is how much it will expand no? from 0 to 75 degrees Celsius, no? given that you have a copper no? material. No? Again, no? the coefficient of expansion of copper is 16. So 16 will be multiplied by 3. No? That's why what was used here for gamma is... 48, no? so 16 times 3 is 48. No? So again, no? this is volume, so we use gamma here. No? But what is usually given is the alpha value. No? Okay, now other things uh, that results not to an addition of heat is the change of its phase. No? Or there is a there is a transfer of internal energy from one material to the other. No? So when when there's uh, when there are materials that come together, no, that are of different temperatures, they will come to an equilibrium state. No, uh, when when you put them side by side. No, so if you let them come in contact, no, after a while, no, they will come to an equilibrium condition. No? So the temperature of one will be shared to the other. No, because there would be a transfer of energy no? and usually this energy that moves from one material to the other no, is known as heat no? now the study of heat is known as calorimetry no? so when we want to measure when we want to get no, how much heat was transferred from one material or the other no? now we even measure not the amount of heat that we derive from food no in terms of this word called calor calorie, no? we measure our food no? with the number of caloric no? that we get, no? calorie that we can get out of it. No? So that's dietary calorie, however. No? So food and uh, some metals no? do possess some amounts of calorie. No? Now, um, 
when you put again no things in the same container they will come into a point where they will no, normalize or equilibrate their condition no? so if you put them in a confined situation no? so when one material loses heat no that heat will be transferred to the second material no? like maybe to its environment no to a ne or to a nearby substance no now heat is the energy that flows no? so when it comes out of your body then it is called heat no? and once it is adapted by another body it becomes its internal energy no? so right now if uh, if my internal energy is high then i will be emitting some amount of heat no? if my internal energy is low then i may be absorbing no? amounts of heat from the environment no? so heat no? is the idea of the energy that is all already you no know, moving out or transferring to another body no? so the heat flow is usually you no know, from hotter to colder no, body no? it cannot go it cannot be the other way around no? so amodang ia direction no? so if you have a fire at the bottom the heat of the fire will eventually transfer to the kettle no, where you are placing your water or trying to boil some amounts of water no? So heat is actually you not know, flowing again you know, from a body of higher temperature to a body of lower temperature. You know? How does heat transfer? Now, first of all, in solids you know, or in metals, we have conduction. You know? Conduction is actually occurring. You know? uh, it's a transfer of heat you know, from molecule to molecule. You know? So when, when one molecule is vibrating fast, then the other molecule is affected you know, or gets influence now and it will also vibrate no? so in a in a metal rod if you place the end of that metal rod in fire you will notice that the other end will get heated no, after some time no? so that's actually no conduction no? every molecule in the metal is affected no or keeps on by vibrating no so once that vibration of the molecules reaches your hand then your hand gets burned no so transfer no by an actual no movement of the particles no or uh, molecules in your in your object no now convection is occurring no when you have gases or liquids no so when you boil water for example the water that is hotter will always go up no the water that is cool cooler will always go down no so this convection current that is constantly whirling no, in your water will cause no the transfer of heat no little by little so in liquids no or in gases uh heat is not transferred molecule to molecule no? so however now the hotter ones always goes up while the colder ones always goes downward no in that seemingly no cyclical manner no? now radiation is the transfer of energy no when there's actually no nothing in between it no? like for example if you put no water in a thermos no thermos is a sealed no environment it's a it's an isolated environment but despite that no uh, that we isolate the hot water inside the therm thermos no well the heat still no gets out or the water there still cools down no so how is that possible the energy can ride radiate no even through a vacuum no? so that's why no we could never hold no that hot water not to be forever hot no in that thermos no so radiation no? now terms like uh, heat capacity no or heat no is also uh, part of our discussion so heat capacity is something like uh, the amount of heat now that one object can hold no? now different substances have different molecular configurations or arrangements no? the cohesive forces that hold them together are also different no? thus when equal amounts of heat now are added to equal masses no, of different substances the changes in their temperatures may also be different no? so for example now if you have this, uh, you are eating this uh, uh, peach mango pie. No? 
So you thought that the peach mango pie is ready for you 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 are now ready to munch it, no? Inkitkon mo na. So abi mo na kay do hindi na hindi na init ng iya uliyata, no? But when you try to bite, no, make a bite, no, na paso ang yapon, no? Because again, no, the inside portion is not yet cool, no? Okay, so again, no, because it's made of different materials, no. So maybe no, the feeling there is too hot still, no. Despite the fact that the outer layer or the crust is cold, no. Ah, abi mo na y ready na siya ng inkiton, no. Pero gulpi lang na paso ikaw, no. So that's what they call heat capacity, no. Different materials can hold, no. Different amounts of heat, no. The specific heat, no, is the quantity heat absorbed by an object, no. Is dependent on the kind of material the object is made of. No? Different objects have different capacities for storing no? internal energy. No? Example: no? A Pyrex glass can become hot easily, no? while water can remain cold. No? It takes a shorter period of time for the py Pyrex glass no? to absorb heat, raise its temperature by a specified number of degrees, while it takes a large Quantity of heat, not to raise the temperature of water, not by the same number of degrees. Not ang tubig yawan kana pa bukal, not kag ko nagabukal na sa padugay na siya kag magtugnaw, not istingan mo ang kalaha, not if you have some frying pan, not your frying pan can easily heat up, not but if you'll just leave it for some few minutes, not it will easily cool down the frying pan. No? Now, if you will this, if you will use that same amount of time also, not to to think now that the large amount of water that you boiled has cooled down. No, let's say after one minute, no, ang kalahap pag uyat mo hindi na siya mainit. Kinti stingan mo kinto small mo yung kamot sa dako dako ng kawa ng may tubig ng nagbukal ka ina. No, one minute after, do you think the water in that container is already cooled down? Maybe not, no. Okay, because again, no, water cools down very, very slowly. No, so it's it takes time to heat water and then it takes time to cool it down. No, but not metals. No, metals can be easily heated up, and it can immediately cool down. No, so that's the nature of the material. No, so again, no, talking about no the way water behaves. No, water. Takes time not to cool down. No? Now, why we, why do we say that? No, because when we take a bath, no, or when we make get a swim, no, ma uh, maligo kasi bye bye balakon gabi. You will notice that the water there, no, if it is a summer time, no, it's, it's really very hot, no. Ma notice mo ang tubi sa dagat, ma init pa mas kin gabi na. No? Again, no? because water takes time to cool down, no. Okay, so hindi na sa parehas sa balas. Ang balas yung paglapak mo bugnaw na na sa waybay. Pero siguro pag paligo mo sa dagat, no, alaba ang pagyapon. Okay, ano the nature of water? Now we indicate specific heat with this small letter C, no, and then this amount of heat, no, required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of the substance, no, one degree higher, no, one Celsius degree probably higher. Uh, specific heat is a measure of the amount of heat required not to produce a given temperature change no and the greater the specific heat of the substance no the smaller is the temperature change no produced by the addition of a given quantity of heat no? so these are all about no uh, heat capacity and specific heat no Again, no, uh, heat capacity of a body no, uh, is usually indicated by this equation, no? mc delta t. m is our mass, c is our specific heat, no? and delta t is our change in temperature. Usually delta t is subtracting no, a final temperature with an initial temperature. No? Now, specific heat is actually no, a constant for uh for a specific material no do para sa isang density no it is it is identified only to that specific material no 
Now, uh, in methods of mixture is when they mix together no, two, con two materials in one container and determine no, how much was the heat lost by one. No? So if let's say we have here a metal ball, a hot metal ball, and we will mix it now with a liquid water here, no? cool, cool water inside. No? So the hot metal will now lose its heat no? and the cooler liquid and the container here no? will now absorb the heat released by this metal ball. No? So one of them will lose heat while the other two meta materials below will absorb. No? So th that's, what, that's what they call as heat loss and heat gain. No? So the, the one who will gain heat is this calorimeter or this container no, that has water inside. No? Now, change of state no, or change of phase. No? When uh, materials are heated, it changes from solid to liquid no? and from liquid to gas. No? What do you call the change from solid to liquid? No? What do you call that process? No? Melting. No? How about liquid to gas? No? What is that change of state no? from liquid to gas? Now, again, no? uh, liquid to gas is either evaporation or vaporization. Question. Is vaporization and evaporation the same? No, they are not. No, they are not the same. No? Evaporation is described as the cooling process. No, if you'll try to put some water, no, in your in your in your in your hand, no, and you fan it, no, you'll notice that you will feel cool because the water there, no, is evaporating, and it is removing the heat in your hand, no, but you did not actually boil the water there to change it from liquid to gas. No? You simply get some fun and the water simply change from liquid to gas. No? So evaporation can actually happen at any temperature. No? Now, however, when you boil the water and you see the steam no, coming out in your pot no, or kettle, no, then that's actually vaporization, changing it from from liquid to gas no by reaching no the boiling point no 100 degrees celsius so the boiling point no or making it really boil is known as vaporization changing it into an actual steam no and it's hot no but again no evaporation can occur no at any temperature no just like when you wash your clothes no you hang it no you don't make the water there boil to change it to gas no now what about changing gas to liquid? No? What's that process called? So we call it condensation. No? How about liquid to solid? Freezing, sir. Okay, uh, liquid to solid freezing or solidification. What about gas to solid? No? Is it possible gas to solid? Gas to solid is known as deposition. What about gas, uh, solid to gas? Sublimation. Na? So, again, uh, different states of matter. Na? We can change it from one state to the other. Na? Uh, and usually, now we, we add their heat na, to change its phase from, na, from solid to to another state. No? Now, where else can we see no, a better example of this no, than a block of ice? No? In a block of ice, you can actually see no, the three states of matter. No? You can see there uh, a melted water no, on top of an ice, and then there's this steam, no? or there, there's this mist that you see no? that is actually no, a result of the, the ice no, changing liquid into gas. No? So, you can you can see it at the top of an ice, no? The three phases of of matter, no? Solid, liquid, gas, no? So again, no, uh, we have that, no? In uh, in this process, no? So um, in in changing, no? Or in adding heat, no? And converting, no? This solid ice, no? Into steam, then we need to add or, no? 
uh, maybe remove heat no kun i change ta naman siya from steam into ice no so but in every stage no there's an addition of heat that is necessary no now to to melt no the ice or to change it from solid to liquid what what heat is needed the heat that is needed not to change its phase is known as latent heat no so to solid to liquid the amount of heat that you add no is known as latent or hidden heat no so for water i think that's around 80 calories no for every gram no of water no uh, of of ice i mean no? so to change it from solid ice to liquid water at a temperature of 0 degrees celsius no now uh when you melt it no you call the amount of heat that you add there as the latent heat of fusion no now another way of adding or changing the phase is from liquid to gas no so the heat that you need there now once water is boiling already and you want to change it to steam you need to add no it's latent heat of vaporization no? to change the boiling water into steam no? So that's another amount of heat that you need. No? Now again, no, the latent heat of fusion of ice, no, when you want to melt ice at zero degrees, you need 80 calories no, for every gram of ice. No? Whereas no, for, for uh, changing it no, to, to gas, no, the latent heat of vaporization is around 540 calories no, for every gram. No? So this way, too higher no much higher to break up no liquids and make it into a gas no so mas dako nga ubra ina no that's why it will need a greater amount of heat no so there are two uh, latent heats no that you need first is to melt no ice to liquid water you need latent heat of fusion and when you change uh, liquid water into steam, no? boiling water into steam, you need the latent heat of vaporization. No? So here are the, again, no? the different uh, states no? when you, or the processes that you do no? to change one state to the other state. No? Now this diagram is also helpful no? in finding no? the, the heat that you need probably no? in changing no, a material from solid and eventually into a gaseous state. No? So from solid to gas no, or solid to liquid, we can use this diagram or this uh, chart no, uh, to know no, how much heat Q no, is needed when you change its state no, from one state to another. No? So phase change. No? So we have here an ice and we want to change that ice no, into liquid water. So you need to raise its temperature no, from zero up to, yeah, no, from a negative maybe temperature to zero, no? first of all. No? Once its temperature reaches zero, then you are ready to change it to liquid no, by adding 80 calories. No? And then you can now change your ice to liquid water no, still at the same temperature of zero degrees. No? So this is what we mean by latent heat. No? So you have to reach zero degrees Celsius first for ice, and so that you can change it to water no, at still at zero degrees. No? Now, when you want to change its temperature into a much higher temperature, no, let's say 100, then maybe you need another amount of heat here, no? in between zero to 100. No? But once it is already at 100 degrees, you need 540 calories no, for every gram of this water no, to change it into steam. No? Okay. So now it will now be converted into steam no? once you add no an, an added value of heat. No? So from ice to steam, no, the total the total energy that you need is this 80 grams, no, 80 calories, no, plus the in between value no, from zero to 100 and the 540. No? And then therefore now you are now able to change your zero degree celsius ice no into a steam no that is uh at a temperature of 100. 
So let's look at this, this at this example. No? So we are to calculate the amount of heat no, that is in calories no, needed to change 200 grams of ice, which is at negative degrees, negative five degrees Celsius. No? And we want to reach no, a temperature of 105. No? So there are heats that are needed here no, to change it from solid into a gaseous state. No? I think the first amount of heat that you need no, is to raise the temperature of ice no, from negative 5 to 0 degrees. No? That's the first step. No? Once you reach 0 degrees, then maybe no, you can use the latent heat now. No? Now, for you to be able to get no, the heat needed no, for Q1, then you need the mass of the ice times its specific heat no, multiplied by its change in temperature. No? So, because there's a change in temperature. So the Q there is MC delta T and formula, yeah. No? For our Q sub 2, no? since it's already at 0 degrees, then all that we need is the latent heat of fusion no? multiplied by the amount of, of the ice, no? which is 200 grams. No? So that's our Q sub 2. No? Our Q sub 3 is now, no? once you reach one, uh, 0 degrees, you will now increase the temperature to 100. So therefore, you will now use no, MC delta T no, as your other formula. No? So this is from solid into liquid. No? Liquid that is already at 100 degrees Celsius. No? Now the fourth one, no? you want to change the boiling water. No? So once it reaches 100, it will boil but it will not still change into gas. No? So what do you need to change it into gas? Then you need your latent heat of vaporization. No? So that's another step. No? So from 100 degrees liquid, you want to make it steam no, at 100 degrees. No? Once all of the water no, is changed into steam, then that's the time that the temperature can now increase further. No? You can now increase it from 100 to 105, once all of the liquid water is already changed into steam. No? Now, Q sub 5 is the heat that you need no? to increase the temperature to 105 degrees Celsius. No? Okay, now here you'll need the other equation. No? Mass of the steam no? times the specific heat of the steam times its change in temperature. No? So you see here that we have some specific values na C sub i, C sub w, and C sub s. No? Now, C sub i is the specific heat when it is ice. C sub w is our specific heat no? when, it is, when it is a liquid water. No? And our C sub s no? is when it is the specific heat when it is steam. No? So ang tatlo ni specific heat values, they are not the same. Even though we are dealing here with, with water, no? But water here is from solid, no? To liquid, and the other one is gas, no? So because of their different states, their specific heat values are also different, no? Even though they are all water, no? Steam is water, no? Ice is also water. In the same way, ice is also water, no? Now, how do we then no, find the value no, of our no, total heat? So, kung kuha na to ng total heat, then we need to add Q1, Q sub 2, Q sub 3, up to Q sub 5. No? So, when you add all this together, then you'll be able to find no, your total heat no, needed to change ice at negative 5 degrees Celsius to a steam no, at 105 degrees Celsius. No? So changing it to ice no, or increasing the temperature of ice, Q1. No? Q sub 1 is M mass of ice times specific heat of ice times its change in temperature. No? So we want to change it from negative 5 to 0. So its change in temperature is 0 degrees minus negative 5. Or the change is actually 5 degrees. No? Now the specific heat of ice is 0.5. No? 
C sub i. No? And then the mass is the same, no? not 200. No? So from ice to steam, 200 na dahil ang gamiton karan for M. No? So this is the heat that you need no? to change the temperature from negative to zero degrees Celsius. No? So you need 500 calories. No? Now to melt that ice now, you need latent heat of fusion. No? So ang kinangalan mo na karon ang Q sub 2. No? Ang Q sub 2 is determined no, by calculating no, the mass na 200 times the 80 calorie for every gram. No? Na i-change mo no, na, na liquid ice no, or, or solid ice into liquid water. No? So 200 grams times 80 gives us 16,000. Sorry, that is 16,000. No? There must be two zero, three zeros there. No? 16,000 calories. No? So we use the latent heat no? of fusion times mass. No? And again, the latent heat of fusion is 80. No? Next stage is to change this liquid water and raise its temperature from 0 to 100. No? Now since there's a change in temperature, then we will use MC delta T. No? Our change in temperature is from 0 to 100, so this difference is now 100 no? times 200 grams times the specific heat of water, liquid water, which is 1, no? 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius. No? Now, the 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius shows that we need more heat no? to change the temperature of liquid water than to change the temperature of solid ice. No? You only need half, no? 0.5 calories lang ang kinangalan mo sa ice. No? But for liquid water, you need the whole one calorie no? to change its temperature to one degree Celsius higher. No? So 200 times the specific heat of liquid water, which is one calorie, times the change in temperature of 100. So that's a total of 20,000 calories. No? Next is, uh, it's now ready for boiling. No? So what we need to change it from liquid water to steam, you need uh, the fourth no? heat, no? which is your latent heat of vaporization. No? So 200 grams of boiling water, change it into steam, no? multiply it by 540. So you need 108,000 calories of heat, no? to change that boiling water into steam completely. No? That steam that is boiling is still 100 degrees Celsius lang yapon. No change in temperature, but there's a change of phase no, of liquid to steam. No? So a change of phase no, may not necessarily follow that there's a change in temperature also. No? But heat is still added no? because of the change in its phase. No? So sometimes no, there's no indication of change in temperature, but heat is absorbed by the material. No? So that is occurring in the latent heat. No? Now the last one is your Q sub 5. And Q sub 5 is changing the temperature from 100 to 105. Now since there's a change in temperature, then we will use MC delta T equation. But this is now steam. So the mass of the steam is still 200 no? because the water there that evaporated no, is simply 200 man yapon. No? So 200 grams of steam times its specific heat of steam, which is half, no? 0.5 calorie per gram, no? times its change in temperature of 105. No? So therefore, the amount of heat needed no, to change it, no, its temperature from 100 to 105 is only 500 calories. No? So you notice that there's lesser heat needed here no, to increase its temperature because this is already a steam. No? Usually they call it as a superheated steam no? once the temperature is already beyond 100 degrees. No? And this is a very dangerous level of uh, heat no? or, or pressurized steam no? when you have this. No? And this is already, you can also perform no? work here no? by by uh, using it in machines. No? Now, adding all this uh, heat together, no? the 500 plus the 16,000, 
plus the 20,000 plus the 108,500. So the total heat to change no solid ice at negative 5 degrees not to steam at 105 degrees no is 145,000 calories all in all. No? So that's how we calculate no the heat needed no in converting no our solid no into some kind of steam no at 105 degrees Celsius. No? And here are other uh formulas that you can probably use no uh in finding uh the change in length area and even in volume no? so you could find this uh slides guys no in your canvas no